Welcome back to live trade videos. Right so on the truth today, I was able to make over two hundred dollars trading demand and supply, and also support and resistance. You know, as traders, you know, one was able to know the difference between supply and demand, and also um, support and resistance. You no, know, there's been um, some people, some traders think they are the same thing. Some things they are different. But today, I'm going to clear the air. I'm going to show us the difference between these two. All right. So I was able to make two hundred dollars trading support and resistance, also supply and demand. All right. So I'm going to show us. All right. So we can see this trade. We can see this is over two hundred forty, two hundred forty dollars currently running in profit. All right. So I was able to take this trade off a demand. All right. The strategy I used to take this trade was. The demand strategy, all right, trading from a demand zone, all right. So now let me explain it. I took this trade based off a demand zone. Now, what is a demand zone? A demand zone is actually a level on the chart that the market uses to buy, all right. Is an already established level on the chart that the market uses to buy or to push to the upside. So you can see this level, this particular level that I mapped out. All right, you can see this blue line here. All right, you can see that how market reacted from here to the upside one twice, just twice. All right, the first time it reacted, came back again, reacted all the way to the upside. So this is actually a verified demand zone. All right, this is a verified demand zone. All right, so a support is also a level on the chart that the market uses to buy. So we can actually say this is a support. So a support and a demand, uh, or, or let, I mean, let me put it this way. A demand zone can also be a support zone, but a support level can not all support levels are actually demand. So all demand zones are support levels, but not all support levels are demand levels. Now, this is an example of a support level. A support level is any level on your chart that is that is below the current market price. Right? Any level on your chart that is below current market price so this is the current market price here at you know trading here at 83.97 you can see it's 83.99 this is a live chart so it's from trading 83.99 all right so that is the current market price so any level below it so when we so this is actually a level here you can see markets use this level to sell when the market traded above it automatically this level becomes an unretested support as long as the market has traded above this resistance, this level now becomes an unretested support. All right, it becomes a support. So if price is coming back again, you should anticipate the you anticipate um bullish pressure or buys from this level. All right, you can anticipate buys from this level. All right, so so also the same way you should never neglect the fact that there is a demand level below the support all right there's an already established support there's an already established level that the market used to buy which is a demand zone all right i hope you're getting the difference which is a demand zone all right which is a demand zone so if the market is approaching your support or approaching your level the confirmations you wait for all right, confirmations could be candlestick. For example, this is an example of a candlestick around this level. All right, you can see that there was a red candle when price was approaching this level, and the next candle was green. Um, they usually call this a bullish engulfing candlestick. It just shows you that there is buying pressure around this demand zone. So when price came into this support level, there wasn't any much reaction. But when it came to the demand zone, which is also a support level below. There was a major reaction. You can see the major. You can see how market pushed all the way to the upside. Came back again to the demand zone. There were multiple weak rejections. Right? There were multiple weak rejections. When I saw this multiple weeks, especially this last candle, I saw that okay, this level is actually a very strong demand zone, and I was able to take my buy. And I'm currently running in about two hundred and fifty dollars profit. All right. So you can do this on any currency pair. I would love us to check it on Euro USD together, where we'll show I will show you um demand and supply and also support and resistance. Now let me quickly just um explain what support and resistance is. So to start with, what is what is a support? Now support is a level or a zone on your chart 
where price reverses to, all right, where price sells into and doesn't have the strength to sell any longer and pushes to the upside. All right, let me take that again. Now, your support zone or your support level is an area or zone on the chart that price reverses from a sell to the upside, all right? Price gets to that level and begins to buy. All right, price sells into that level and begins to buy. Now, let me quickly add show you a level like that. Remember what I said, it's not a line, but it's an area or a zone. For example, this zone, right? You can see that price was initially selling, and when it got to this level, what happened? It bought to the upside, right? So, this is a major support. Now, let me also identify another um, support, but this would be like a minor support level over here. Right? You can see that price actually sold into this level, got here, and there was a minor buy. All right, let's pick another one. This level two, price got here, and there was a minor buy. You can see those. These are minor supports, minor support. But this is a major support because price got here and pushed all the way to this upside. Where the sell started from, it caused a complete reversal to the upside. All right, hope you, hope you get that. Now, on the other hand, what is a resistance? A resistance is a level on your chart or a level in the market where price reverses to the downside. So price or the market buys to a certain level and begins to stall and pushes down to the downside. All right, pushes to the downside. This is a perfect example. You can see price was initially buying and goes to this area. What happened? There was a complete push to the downside. Right, so this is a, a this is a resistant level. Right, let me show you what, uh, another minor resistance. Right, this is a minor resistance level over here because see what happened when price here there was a push to the downside. This is another minor resistance over here. This is another minor resistance. Right, so price got here there was a little sell before price continued pushing up. So, but this is a major resistance because the sell was massive, the sell was huge. All right, so there's a very high chance trading with resistance and support is that there's a very high chance that if price should get there again, there will be a major sell. You can see this was a previous level price sold from here. So, if you are a technical analyst, what you can do is to anticipate that if price gets here again, you can sell from there, and that is exactly what happened. Price got into the level, and what happened? There was a push to the downside. So you could have made all of this money, right? So that is actually the difference between a support and actually a resistance. All right, that's the difference between support and res resistance. Now, let me quickly make mention of this. If you're trading support and resistance, now if a level or if the market respect or respect a resistance for example let me give a perfect example let's delete all of this let's delete all of this level all right now if you're trading with support and resistance this is how you can this is what you anticipate now if price respects a level or creates a level in the past all right and breaks above it for example let's use this um this level here Let's use this this level, call it this one, all right? So you can see price is level to sell once, twice, now broke above it. Now, when it breaks above it, this was a resistance, right? This was also acted as resistance. Now, when the price begins to trade above it, that level is no longer a resistance, but now an unretested support. All right, I'll take that again. Now, a broken resistance or level. When price trades above it or below it, for example, if it's a support, if price should trade below a support, that level no longer becomes a support because price is now below it, all right? Because price is now below that level. Now, that level becomes a resistance. That level becomes a what? A resistance. Now, let me give a perfect example. Now, you can see that, okay, price, this was a... Over here, you can see price uses level to what to buy, right? It's like a minor um, support level. But now, when price traded below it, what should happen? This level is no longer a support because price is now below it. Automatically, it becomes a resistance. So you can anticipate that if price should come there again, there will be a sell. 
right? Let's see. And that is exactly what happened. You can see price pushed all the way to that point again. What happened? It sold down, sold to the downside. So a broken resistance, all right? A broken resistance over here. A broken resistance over here. When price trades above it over here, you can anticipate a buy when price come back into that level. And that is exactly what happened. When price came to this resistance, all right, when it traded above it, it came all the way down to this um to this point where, where it acted as resistance. But now it's no longer a resistance for its support. That was why we could see a buy from that level. Do you understand? Now that is a support and resistance. All right. And when price takes out its support and resistance or a key level, a key level can be a support or a resistance. All right. A key level can be a support or a resistance. Now when price trades below or above it, like we saw here, when tried to trade up uh, traded above it, right? You can anticipate that when price comes back, it will use that level to do the opposite. Of what it did or you used it to do before price traded above your before price broke it or before the market broke above that level all right so this was a resistance price broke above it came back again and now acted as well support all right but now that same level all right that same level when price broke traded below it again it was no longer a support but now resistance Right, it was no longer a support, but now acted as what resistance because it used that same level or zone to what to sell. Now that is a that is your support and resistance. But now to demand and supply. Now demand can can be relative to support. What I mean is that demand is also a level of the chart that price uses to buy. All right, demand is a level or a zone on your chart. The price uses used to buy. Now let's let's let me give you a perfect example. Right? So this is a demand zone. Right? This is a demand zone because price uses level to what to push the upside. Not once, but twice. Used pushed once, came here again to that level again. And what happened? Pushed to the upside. Alright? Even used the level again when it came to this level. Remember, I said it's not a line but a zone. So it came to that zone again, and what happened? push the upside so that is actually a demand zone all right so now the difference between demand and support is that a support whether when price breaks above a resistance automatically the level what the price or the market must haven't or must have not used that level to buy automatically when price breaks above it it automatically becomes a support but now it's going to be an unretested support, all right? But the demand to price must have used that level to buy in the past. Like, for example, this level here. Do you understand? So the, the, the difference is that a previous level or a resistance that price automatically trades or price breaks above or trades above automatically becomes a support. So it's not compulsory price must have used that level to buy or use that zone to buy before. All right. It's not compulsory. So that is a support. Automatically becomes a support. But a demand zone price or the market must have used that zone, which is the one below here, to buy already. All right. So for example, if you're looking for buying opportunities, what you can look for is from support or demand zone. So if I was to analyze this chart. If I want to take a buy, what I would have done is to pick a this demand zone one, and next thing is to pick out my support, which is this one here, because this price is level to sell, but now it's trading above it. So if price is here, if price is trading above, if I'm looking for buy, the first thing I'm looking for is this support here, and if price doesn't use support to buy, I can wait for this demand zone to take my buy. Hope you get it, all right? Is that from support or from demand, all right? So demand can also be support. So demand can also be support. So all demand zones are support zones, but not all support zones are demand zones, all right? So it's the inverse, all right? Let me take that again. All demand zones are support zones, but not all support zones 
are demand zones. All right. So like I said, this is a demand zone because price has used this level to buy. But this is not a demand zone. But this is not a demand zone because price has not used this level to what? To push up. But this is a support zone. All right. But this is a support level. Now, on the other side, for a resistance and supply. Now, let's leave this. Oh, let's, let's leave it. For a, for a resistance and supply. All right. Now, this level here is our supply zone. All right. Because price is level to what? To sell this is another one here this is another one here this is another supply zone because price is uses level to what to sell all right but now take a look at this take a look at this let's bring out our shapes all right now this is a minor support right this is a minor support because price is level to what to buy but when price trade above it, this is no longer a support, but now a resistance. All right, this is no longer a support, but now a resistance. So we should expect that if price come here, we can sell. All right, all right, we can sell from there. All right, but you can see price did not use the support to sell. Sorry, the resistance, the broken support. All right, which could autom which is automatically resistance when price trades below it. Right, but rather came all the way to the demand zone. Rather came all the way to the demand zone and what sold all the way to the downside. So if you sold from here and price probably um kept pushing up, you can wait for the supply zone to sell. All right, you can wait to sell from the supply zone. All right, so this is this is not a supply zone. All right, this is not a supply zone, but this is a resistance. This is a supply zone and also a resistance. All right. This is a supply zone and also a resistance. Now let's take another opportunity. Let's take another example. Now you can see price use this level to buy also to this. Up. So this is a support, right? But when price traded below it, this is no longer a support. Now let's delete these previous ones. Now. When price traded below this, this support, broke below it, automatically this becomes a resistance. You can wait to sell from there. All right. So this is a resistance. Then our our supply zone is this one here. This is our new supply zone here. Because price has used this zone to what? To sell. So if we if we take a sell and price doesn't sell from here, we can wait to take the sell from our supply zone. But if you look, price actually respected. The resistance and so down. But now, since price has used level to sell, this now this level now becomes a supply zone. Yes, it now becomes a supply zone. So we can take it. Then our new resistance is or our new resistance is here. This is our new resistance. So this is also a resistance and a supply because price has used this level to what to sell. But now this level is a support, a minor support that price, once price traded below it. This level automatically becomes a resistance, but it is not a demand zone yet. Right? It's not a demand zone yet, but a resistance. But this is a demand zone and also a resistance because price has used this level to sell. All right? And let's see what happened. All right? Price came close to the resistance and sold off. All right? So once price is, uh, is trading lower, you can then pick this level again as your demand zone over here. Then this will be like your over here will be like your minor support, all right? And this will be your demand zone because price must have used in fact, yeah, price must have used the level to sell to the downside, all right? So obviously we see that price didn't use this resistance to sell, but came to the demand zone to what to sell, right? So this is how you pick out your demand and supply zone when you are looking for selling opportunities in the market and if it's the other round we are looking for buying opportunities you will look for you pick out your demand and sorry yeah, buying opportunities you pick out your demand and support zones right i hope you've been able to understand the difference between supply and demand and also support and resistance all right so remember, do well to click on the subscribe button and click on the like button, all right? So that you get more amazing videos like this and that will help in your trading and your technical analysis, all right? So stay safe and have a wonderful time. Bye for now.